In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do the basket weave. And the basket weave is called the basket weave because it kind of looks like the concept of a wicker basket. This concept is actually a very simple idea, and it's actually the same on both sides. So no matter what you do on one side, it's going to look like the basket weave on the other. There's advantages of doing that basket weaving kind of ideas. It actually makes your yarn a lot more thicker. And because the uh, lines are overlapping each other, it causes it to double its thickness, therefore being a bit warmer, plus giving it some pretty cool ideas as far as uh, design effects. So let's get started on learning how to do the basket weave. So let's start off with our slip knot. Hey everybody, it's Mikey from Mikey's Mail. In today's tutorial, on behalf of all free crochet and I, we'd like to introduce you to the basket weave. So starting off with the slip knot, and for more free patterns or crochet ideas, check out allfreecrochet.com. So we want to look at this pattern, it's in sets of four, it's sets of eight. So this is four, 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 four. But when you look at two together, it's an eight. So one, so you want, in order to make this happen, look like this, you need four to go down. So that's why they say it's in sets of eight. So eight, eight, and eight. But what we need to pay attention to is we need extra on the sides of each side. There's a little bit too much extra in this particular example. But what we want to do is we want to keep it in sets of eight and then add two at the rest end of the line. So let's uh, keep that. So let's get going. So this is not one. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's your first set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's your next set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you just want to keep going to the distance, keeping them in the sets of eight. And at the very end, what we want to do now is that we want to add one or two extra. One is for this side and one is for the other side of this basket weave. So one and two. And now what we want to do, and I'm holding my finger and my thumb strategically right here so that I remember because what's going to happen is that the video is going to flip and I'm going to tell you to go to the third from the hook. But if you hold your finger there right now and just go one, two, three, you won't need to worry about counting the third back from the hook because your finger is and thumb is indicating where it is. So let's move on to your next set. So what we want to do now is that we want to look at this. In order to create this pattern, we need to double crochet to give ourselves a stability of a line to coming back across. So all we need to do is grab the material and counting either third from the chain, so third one down, or where you left your finger and your thumb. And it go down into the actual chain, grabbing through, pull through two and two. So that was a double crochet. So let's do it again. So into the next chain, through, pulling it through, two and two, so grabbing it. So do this, pulling it through, two and two. So do this now into the end of the line. We'll catch back up, we'll turn around, and we'll get you started on your first line of doing the basket weave. Okay, we've now come to the end of the line. It certainly doesn't look like the basket weave, does it? But this is our established foundation row. We need to now then turn it and begin. Now we need to understand terminology and we have posts and the posts are the gaps in between each of the the bottom layers. So you see like a, a row of string. It's almost like a train track and then you see another one on the top. Well the things that are joining the top and the bottom are called the posts. And we're going to be working on the front post and the back post. So in order to create this next line we need to double crochet and normally when we start a line we actually double or chain three. But in this case we're only going to chain two. And the reason for it is that because we're working on the back post way down here and not up here, just like this is started up here, because we're coming down, if you chain up three, you're going to have your material cre creating like this on the edges, creating your work to be distorted. So now let's grab the material and we're going to start, you can see this is on the front post, you can see that because the other one is sunk in behind. So that's the back post, so front, back, front, back. So let's grab it from the front, so, slicking, so pulling it apart, grabbing the material and going into the one side of the post and then back out the other side. Pulling it through, pull through two and two. And now remember I said it's in groups of four, so you want to do that at least four times. So it's going into the very next one, popping, popping it through. So I'm making it look a lot easier than it is. Getting used to working with the back and the front post can be a little bit challenging. So you want to be able to uh, just get used to actually doing it yourself. 
So let's do four in a row. So that was number three. And you can see clearly that that's only three done so far. So it's a pattern that doesn't get easily lost in the, in the ideas. Okay, so the next one, we've just done our four. So now we're gonna work in behind, just like so. And we're just gonna grab the material and now coming from the behind, sticking your needle out through the front of your work, popping it back out to the back to grab the back post, pulling it through two and two. So now you can see that that pulled this string, the string now looks to, uh, distorted as being pulled backwards. And you'll see that a line is now forming right in the front. And that's what those lines are here. So let's do that again. We want to do that four times. So grabbing that from the back, pulling it through two, two. So that was number two. So you'll notice that that line in the front looks really unusual, doesn't it? Because it looks like it's sticking right out your face and looks like it's all messed up. But in actual fact, it'll settle down within the next line to pull itself backward. So now we just did the four back posts. So now let's do the front post again for another four. So wrapping the material, going to the very next post available, grabbing it from the front. We want to do that four times. So you just want to keep going back and forth, four to the front, four to the back. And we want to keep doing that until the end of the line. So the next one, there is your four. So let's go and do the back. So grabbing it, coming from the back side, coming into the front, and then flipping it back out to the back again for a double crochet, and continue to do that. You'll find that once you do one back and pulling it from the back, the other one kind of actually pulls itself backward on its own, making it easier to grab. So you'll notice that there's a, it's actually a really easy pattern because once you do the one post, the other posts tend to follow suit. And now we're going to come back and do the front again. So just come in from the front side, but in, pop out. And keep doing that, please, until the end of the line. And uh, I'm going to pick back up just before you finish, and we'll show you how to do the edging. Now, in my case, I, and I have now three back posts here, and now I still have two more to go and the edge. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I got a mistake here. It means that I've got one extra post here. So what am I going to do? Am I going to panic attack? Nah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come from behind, and not only am I going to grab one post, but I'm going to grab both of them and drag them both together, just like so. And yes, I am so cheating right now, but it's okay. And uh, what I want to do is I want to pull those together so that my pattern looks consistent as I go along. So now we just have the last chain to go, and we're just going to grab the material, and we're going to half double crochet. Do not go into this gap because that will separate your work. Go into the side chain, pulling it through and then pull through. So that, that was my way of fixing my very bottom edge so that my edging in the bottom looks consistent. So yes, it's cheating, but you know, sometimes you can't get it right always the first time, and there's more viewers that do that than get it right the first time. So let's uh, continue along to your next line. Okay, so we're just gonna turn our material, just like where we left off, and now we're, you can really see that this line is really popping out in here, and again, that'll settle down as we go along. Now each one of these basket weaves are actually three lines. So we just uh, completed one of the lines of the three. Okay, so every time we get, so what I would do is on a piece of paper, write one, two, and three, and just check off every time you complete a line and then just uh, keep doing that. So we wanna look at it now and we're gonna start off. And so then these ribs are kind of like facing towards you and when you turn it back around, you can see that that is indeed um, coming forward. So let's chain up our two. Just, we're always going to chain two when we go to turn. And because these ribs are on the front side, I want to maintain them on the front side for at least three lines. So this is the second line of the actual three lines. Okay. So if it's on the front now, you want to maintain it on the front. And if it's on the back, you want to maintain it on the back. So just grabbing it from the front posts on the front side. Okay, so that was the last of the four. So everything still remains in groups of four. Okay, it's very hard to miss these uh, stitches unless you miscount right up at the very beginning. So you can see that the next one appears in behind. So we want to maintain that. So grabbing it and now just popping it in through the front and back out through the back. Okay, so we're grabbing the, the back post going through. And we want to do that again. 
So just go out across this line, so matching exactly what you have. So if it's on the front, maintain the front. If it's on the back, maintain the back. And at the very end, we'll meet back up. So I'm going to switch, got one more in the back here, and then we're going to switch back to the front side. It's so obvious that it's that you can tell where everything is. So you can see that now, see how these two lines are like this? The next one is right in front of you. So it's obviously on the front side. So continue that, we'll pick back up at the end of the line, and then we'll turn it and carry on. So this is the second of the three lines. So this is the end of the second pass. And so basically you got one more post that's in behind. And again, we're coming to the side chaining because that's the last one left. And again, we're just gonna half double crochet. So grabbing the material, going right into the chain, do not go into the gap, pulling it through and then pull through all three. That's a half double crochet. And you can see the half double crochet equals it nicely even though you are double crocheting. So now you can really start seeing it, but we're not done. This is only the second of the three. Okay, so let's turn our material going up. So now we want to maintain this exact stitching again for the last time before we uh, make everything opposite in order to create the weave. So let's chain up two, one, and two, and then going back across this pattern, this is the next one is right in front, so you want to come in from the front side. And then just continue to go matching exactly what's already in your line uh, as stitch by stitch and work your way across to the end. And we'll meet back up at the end and um, we'll flip it and then we'll reverse everything on starting to really create the effect of the weave. So the next one's in behind, so we're gonna continue that and just match exactly what you have. So now coming to the end, this is the pass of the line of three and we're just got one more back one to do. Let's do that. And we have our side chain yet to do, so it's a half double crochet. So going into the chain itself on the side pulling it through, pulling it throughout three. So now it's time to opposite everything that we have just done. And the opposite then is what's gonna create the next batch of basket weaves. So let's turn our material. And now what we're gonna do is opposite everything to what we have just done. So let's chain up two, one and two. And we're just gonna go in and look at it. Okay, so these posts are in the front. Instead of matching it from the front, I want you to grab the material and come in from behind the post. Okay, so these are a little bit awkward. And the reason why they're awkward, do you see that these lines are here are really close to each other? Well, that's what you're doing in behind is that you have to grab in between these lines. And it's uh, in the very beginning of it when getting used to it, it's a little bit of a challenge. So grabbing it and going into the post, okay? So grabbing it from the back side because we want opposite and grabbing it and pulling it through two and two. Okay, so we just pulled that one back and now the line that we have been creating under here is now starting to form in the front, which is creating the opposite effect. So grabbing it from behind. So everything in the front you want to grab in behind and everything in the back you want to grab from the front. So basically you're just doing opposite. So this will be pass number one again. So just everything is in uh, lines of three for this particular pattern. Okay, so that was, we just grabbed everything from behind. So you can see that there's kind of a ridge that's forming. That's good, that's what we want. And now that these ones are on the back, so now we want to grab by the front. So going in, going into the post, flipping it back out. And now we want to pull these forward. It doesn't get any more simpler than this concept really. Actually, I really, really, I've never done the basket weave until this tutorial. And I think I'm considering doing an entire afghan of the basket weaving. I think it's brilliant. So that's going in. So the ones that are in the front, so now we want to grab those from behind. Because we just want to opposite. So go and do this round of this row. We'll meet back up at the end and we'll continue along. And this is not line number one of the 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 transition, I guess you can say. And again, write down on a piece of paper one, two, and three. You will get used to the look of what one, two, and three passes will look like. But in the very beginning, I would suggest you write it down just to make it easier for yourself. So the next ones are in the back, so we want to pull those forward and continue along for the rest of the line. So this was number line number one of the transition uh, line. So we're just going to half double crochet ourselves into the side chain to, to to finish that off. So you can see now the transition of going from one side of the basket weave to the other is now taking effect on both sides. So let's flip the material and this will be line number two. Okay, and let's chain up our two, one, and two. And now on this one, we're just gonna match exactly what you see. So in this one, we're gonna come from behind because the first one is in behind. 
So we just want to match everything. So basically the line one of every one of the transitions you're grabbing from the opposite side to change the pattern. And then basically number two, you're just maintaining and number three, you're also maintaining until you get back to number one again, where you do that transition stitch. So these ones are now in front. So let's come from the front. So in, pop. So let's uh, just maintain this line going across exactly what you see. Just repeat exactly what you see and just, just to maintain the level of stitching. Okay, the next one is in behind. So continue to the rest of the line and we'll meet back up at the end and we'll flip. So we're coming up to the end of line number two and uh, on this particular stretch. So I've got everything, remember everything is in lines one, two, and three. So we're just coming from the front because the other ones were in the front. And now the very end, we're just gonna come into the chain for a half double crochet. So that was line number two. And now let's go to line number three. So we're just gonna flip it and go to line number three. And we're just gonna match everything. So one and two, just match everything to what you already see. So grabbing it, these are in behind, these are in front. So we're just gonna come in from behind because those are already in behind. So line number three on every one of these is about matching what is already there, just like line number two. It's only line number one that we opposite everything. Okay, got one more to go. So basically you're gonna end up with three, what appears to be three actual lines. So one, two, and three. So you see that one, two, and three. Uh, so if you're getting used to looking at this project, you're just looking for those three lines. Okay, so this, these are in the front, so I wanna maintain the front. So just continue along and we'll meet back up at the end and we're gonna do a line number one and then finalize this uh, tutorial because everything is starting to repeat itself. Okay, so we're just finishing off line number three and again, half double crochet yourselves into the edge. So now we're gonna turn it now. We've got our three done and now we wanna flip and now we wanna begin number one again. So one is about oppositing everything that's already there. So let's chain up one, two, one and two. And now these are in the back. So now what we wanna do is pull those forward. So grabbing the material, going into the post on the front side, popping it. Okay. For double crochet and so basically this line number one just like you did before in line number one is that you're oppositing everything that is in there so these were originally in the back so now we're pulling them forward by grabbing the front posts okay now these are in the front so now we need to come in from behind sticking the material through popping it back reversing it. So basically you've just learned how to do the basket weave compliments of all free crochet and Mikey's mail. Very simple pattern. It's a bit of a yarn pig as I said. In today's tutorial we are using a size J hook. I'm using a four ply Bernat yarn uh, for this but this kind of pattern is great for any size hook or, or yarn. Just make sure that your yarn and your hook complement each other for uh, sizing. So it's a great uh, versatile pattern. It's actually a lot of fun. Again, I'm contemplating on making an afghan with this. So on behalf of all free crochet and I, we welcome you to the world of crochet. And uh, if you want any further information, allfreecrochet.com. And there's more videos in both Mikey's Mail and All Free Crochet online YouTube channels. We'll talk to you soon and have a great day.